In today's episode, we will be going over some of the best highlights from the matchup between T1 and HLE during the lower finals of the 2024 LCK Spring Playoffs. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Yes, yeah, so missing out so heavily in Huddle Life Esports, not even allowing Zayas to play lane 1v1, just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Alcaria making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well in this first blood as Ona comes on over and is going to be able to take that one down. Can you know, relatively safely get out of any engage attempt that Doran has, but this is re basically removing the top part of the lane for Doran, putting Zayas out of early games. Could be, oh, they're looking tense. Yeah. The light is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is. The sling does come back. The Viper will survive. And the turret is so angry. Zekka is going to move in. He finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement. Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane. It's working out so far. As he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup. Seismic shot goes wide. And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense. Oh, oh and they get the kill on a Faker. Experience with Twisted Fate when he was a mid laner as well. The way that you would counter it is by, uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well, the full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires, as now the wall is going to come in. And T1, they single out the AD carry, and we certifying it, Wolf. I mean, I think I will. It's two kills here early for the Zeri. And what else about to Hanwell Life Esports here, getting a little bit ahead of themselves, trying to set up for this dragon, end up losing the fight. Now they will look to try to secure this now. Owner, very far away. Yeah, Carrier is going to get stunned up here. Delight just playing Bouncer. We'll try and get Ona out of here. They are not going to be able to find it. And Ox, you're right next to me. Not if it's point and click. You know, you have to catch the Zeri. You have to pick off Goom. And if you fail to do so, you will lose a team fight. Opted not to teleport without a lot of vision. Oh, there's a flash out. Zayas not risking it. I had a feeling that maybe he was going to be able to walk his way out. Um, definitely like, one of the best avoidance of CC abilities, but yeah. let's play it safe. I feel like Zayas is uh, summoners per minute already in the series. is <laughs> so high. Very um, high. We need to get that stack. Um, uh, we'll have to get someone on it. Atlas, it did look a little bit silly for Curry. You can respect the idea. Now that said, Herald is going to crash here into the mid lane as they try to take out this turret in response. Yep, that's going to do a decent chunk of damage. Not going to be able to take that one down just yet. Trade back as far as turrets are concerned and for T1. I'm Life Esports, though. They just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The cease and desist comes in, and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. And yeah, that's part of the issue as well. Hunter Life Esports have two carries in their composition. If you target one of them like that, if you do that to Zekka in the lead up to. Aris broke down. Both sums available. It's going to make it difficult, you know. The ult from the Yone, easily dodgeable, but actually it looks like T1, you know, kind of shows you the priority what it is at Chemtech Soul. Five members of Hunter Life Esports group up, T1 don't even care. Yeah. Just look to get over to T1, Hunter Life Esports are on the objective. Yeah, started this one up, carry on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt as there is the Destiny to light off on the side. But there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove and Viper is going to be wiped out. So Zeta has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured. But that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss as Faker will take down Doran. All of that money meaning not that much. And T1, they'll look to the Baron. And T1 never... This fight is, should be ours. Easy to take if Carrier gets the engage. He does, and now they get more than just the team fight. They're looking for Baron. Yeah, and you know, Pina is still up and available. Does have Flash, does have Smite. TP is available for Zekka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is. Pina should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50-50 to win. He flashes forward, and they just turn on him immediately. Taken down before the Baron's in range. That's going to be the secure. And T1 just level-headed the whole time. They'll take themselves their purple worm, and now the problems in the composition here for Hanwha Life, you know, even with the, the setup they have, is Doran is a huge brick wall but when you're playing. But T1 with the Baron, he should be able to get even more of these items. Seismic Shot going to be picked up once again as Faker finds yet another one. That's a good glacial prison, though, onto Zayas. He's going to have to get out of there. The Unbound Soul gets Zekka back to safety as well, but now the re-engage. Delight looks for it, but he's just dead before he can do anything. 
And so T1 with five man strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And they've already gotten rid Layer damage upon damage upon damage. There's no real AD carry, not traditionally anyways here for Viper. He's got to poke his way oh. through. Yeah, Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Doran as he teleports in. That is not the warm welcome that he was wanting as he looks to try and help out his teammates. Looks to try and get out of there. Gumi Yushi taking matters into his own hands as the turret will be taken down. That is it's locked in, you know, that's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now... Oh, Ona possibly with a bit of a face check here. Will be oh. taken out two seconds before the Elder! And this is one of the issues, you know, they went in for the IE, but it took some to set a trap, and because T1 are late there, Boris holding them back, it means they don't have a jungler now. Yeah, they don't have a jungler, and now Doran can do his work, and this time, it makes sense to sit on Dragon and have Doran hold the angle here. Now oh, he's gonna have to wrap around. No 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're gonna have to try and find this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shove, and they are going to even out the numbers. It's no Doran! Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now, as they have the executed Zekka finds him, and a three-max shove from Faker is massive! And it's a double for Faker, they'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff. And I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that's the ace. And even Elder isn't enough. T1, the dragon, it seems like it's gonna be doomed, but they handle the fight. They managed to lock them down. The help on Guma was so close to the execute threshold, but not quite there. And Viper just cannot do enough. Viper can't do enough. He doesn't have the time. He's playing with Aldi Bars here, and even with. The miracle of owner just stepping forward there and getting caught. Anwa Life cannot take the Elder. We talk about the value of those rocks, the shoves into a composition like this all the time. And he ends up getting serious work done now. Oh. Anwa Life to try to contest this Baron, but it's already gone. Yeah, yeah it's already gone. There's easy. To, a lot of these champions for T1 can escape over the wall, as you can see. So they just been double team. He's, he's played six unique champions of playoffs. So be his seventh. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1ing and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive! alive. He finds the double kill. Oh, is going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it! They killed him so many times Order and again. that time they were How here. many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Carrier and stuff. We were talking about Guma Zeri. I mean, they... I was ready for game two. They threw so much at Viper. I think they just expected him to die. And I'm going to be honest, I did too. Me too. Viper, who's extremely fed. Level 18 has been for a while. Rely on your comp. You don't have to pick just because you have Vi. You can. But this comp is so good at re-engage, was what we talked about in the draft, I didn't think it was going to be relevant in this game because T1 had a 10,000 gold lead. But now, the tables have turned and Hanwha Life... That ...we've had to talk about really either, as Hanwha Life will now move towards this inner turret. They are just splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into Faker, not going to be able to convince them not to break open the base. It's like you say, it could be a trade of inhibited turrets, but Hanwha Life Esports, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh! one. They find the engagement and they blow off Faker into the back line. Goes Curry, he tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members, is that enough for the end of the game? I don't think so, as Hamalife runs going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore, or rather the flip. Oh, no! they find the engagement! Able to get out of there though is Zayas, he did have that flash available as there's a teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well as he's going in but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and 0-1 in the series. Humble Life Esports with down 11,000 gold and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, Hunt please. Wolf. <laughs> they take it in the end. Early game, the lane. These were some of the best highlights from today's LCK 2024 Spring Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.